Welcome back to Let's Play Metal Gear Solid 3. We're in a jail cell. So we're gonna save. Now in the last episode we were caught up in the torture chamber after Volgan and the boss captured Snake, beat the crap out of him, and now we're gonna see how Snake is gonna manage to get out of this situation. Not terribly different than what happened in Metal Gear Solid. Snake, Snake? was caught up in a torture chamber there. Snake? My mouth hurts when I talk. Did you get cut up? It feels like someone shoved me under a lawnmower. Do me a favor. Tell me a story to take my mind off the pain. Snake, have you ever heard of Renfield? Is that a movie? It's the name of a character. He's locked up in a cell waiting for the master to return, eating the spiders that crawl along the walls. Ugh, change the channel. He waits and waits for ages. Finally, just as he's beginning to forget whether he's human or not, the Master comes for him, saying, the time has come. Renfield is overjoyed. Wait, isn't this... The Master spreads his huge wings, and a gust of wind fills the cell. Come on, I don't want to hear this. And there, standing before Renfield in human form was... Dracula. Exactly! If you stay there too long, your old buddy Dracula is going to come and get you too. So you better start thinking of a way out of there. <sighs> you better not leave me without someone to talk to. Please, Snake, think. There's got to be a way out of there. I'll try. Okay. Just let me know if you start having nightmares about Dracula. <sighs> oh, can you believe that? She goes and tells him a friggin' story about a horror movie while he's in prison, scared to death, but... <laughs> Wait, well, hold on. What happened here? Well, I reset the game, and there was actually a good reason for me doing that, or at least a reason. I don't know if it's really that good of one. But we're going to restart the game, and we're going to load the save that we just created. Let's go give that a try and see what happens. Wait a second. What in the hell is this? What is this thing? Where's the name? Something's wrong here. Now it turns out this is actually just an Easter egg in the game. I don't think this Easter egg existed in the HD version that they created for the 360 PS3. But it's here in the original PlayStation 2 version and the subsistence version that sort of like the enhanced version. And what it is, it's a game called Guy Savage, I think it's called. It was a game that was under development by Konami, and, well, I guess they figured out that it wasn't really going to go too far, which is not an uncommon thing in the game, because when the games get developed up to, to a certain point, then they axe the project afterwards, and it happens. Well, this game was axed, and I guess the director of Metal Gear Solid 3 figured you know what, well we got this here, why not just stick it in as a weird little easter egg, and that's exactly what it is. It is more or less just a basic hack and slash game where these weird monsters come up and this dude with the sword goes and and cuts the crap out of it. No. Police. <laughs> Zombies or something that wear police uniforms. And one of the cool things about it, though, I mean, it, this dude, this uh, guy Savage, I guess it's called, goes and powers up, and he has this ability to, you've seen it a couple of times, where he grabs a hold of him with his weird little swords there, and rips him in half, and it sort of makes this weird kind of filleted look at these guys. Now this will continue, not indefinitely, but it'll continue for a couple of minutes or so, until it will finally end, or until you die. Once you die, then it ends. There we go, it's over. Oh, I thought it was over. Okay, we get to kill him. Man, it makes me wonder how far into the development this game got before they cancelled it. Oh, 
know whether how much work they had to do to get it into this game in the Metal Gear Solid 3. He's not even using his swords right now, he's just swinging his hands and he's got claws or something. <gasps> Running in the boxes and they explode. There's nothing left to kill. Oh, happy birthday. Looks like they were missing the A in that. Oh, there we go, something to kill very very big change from what we were doing before there it's over big change from what we were doing before because in instead of like stealth gameplay you know hack and slash it's about as different as it can get and we're returning to reality the colors are off that was a result of a bad capture with my hardware, I, I gotta apologize for that. It's gonna continue that way for the, at least the rest of the episode. Jeez, I guess that was played off as being a nightmare. Let's go call and figure this thing out. Snake, what happened? What do you think? Are you not feeling well? No, I'm feeling fine. I had the most amazing dream thanks to you. Ah, you didn't really dream about Drac. Don't say it. The last thing I need is a double feature. It was surreal. I was being attacked by a horde of weird human-like monsters. What's wrong with me? It must be a form of persecution complex, probably triggered by extreme stress. The external stimulus of the room is- I've got a different theory. I think it was caused by your pillow talk. But I didn't... <sighs> I'm sorry, Snake. I didn't know you were that sensitive to it. I mean, who'd have thought, Drac? Uh, uh... Sorry, that just slipped out, I swear. Come on, Snake, don't be mad at me. All right, I forgive you. Really? Yeah. Good, I'm glad. Snake, there must be a way out of there. Don't get discouraged. You'll find it. I intend to. Snake, what happened? Major, what year is this? Beg your pardon? Where am I? It's 1964. You're in a cell in Groznygrad. What did they do, Snake? Make you drink an entire keg of vodka? No. You know, I hear they've got 98-proof vodka in the East. Back in England, we don't call stuff like that fine spirit. We call it sulfuric acid. Imagine, if you will, your internal organs being slowly eaten away as smoke pours out of your mouth. Really, Snake, you shouldn't be touching that. Was it a dream? A dream? Well, how nice. And here I thought I sat up all night worrying about you for nothing. It was almost real. I was holding this sword in my hand. Snake, are you okay? You're not going loony on me, are you? Not at all. I'll make it back, no matter how much of that sulfuric acid they make me drink. Good show. I'm sure you'll find a way out of there. Yeah. Dream a little dream of your own while you wait for word from me. Snake? Eva, do they drug the prisoners here with hallucinogens? I don't think that's their style. Why? I had a pretty bad dream. A dream? This monster that I'd never seen before was coming at me with a knife. And I wasn't me, I was something else. That doesn't surprise me. You're in a mild state of shock from all the pain and exhaustion you're going through. Ah. Uh. Maybe one day you'll learn to stop hiding yourself. What do you mean? I know how you feel, Snake. I'm a spy too. You don't realize it, but the fake you is eating away at the real you. The person you're pretending to be is becoming the person you are. And the real you is screaming out from somewhere deep inside. That's what you saw in your dream. Maybe so. I'd sing you a lullaby or something, but unfortunately I don't know any. So pick your favorite song. 
and I'll sing it for you in your head. Any song? And you can have as many encores as you want. Sounds fun. <laughs> it's a deal, then. I'm sure you'll find a way to escape. Good luck. Thanks. Snake, you okay? Yeah. I had a terrible dream. No kidding. What happened? I don't want to think about it. I was being attacked by monsters that looked human, and I'm not even sure if I was really me. At least it was just a dream. It's all over when you wake up. True. When you think about it, the fact that you can imagine a situation worse than the one you're in now means life can't be all that bad. I sure hope so. Well, let me tell you about the absolute worst, most sickening nightmare I ever had. This isn't one for the kids. Okay, so there's this big pile of crap, right? It's shaped like a giant tank, and it's walking around on two legs, going on a rampage and stomping on people and houses and stuff. And this giant turd is carrying the nastiest missiles you ever saw. Like, whenever it launches one of its turd missiles, whatever it hits, people, trees, buildings, turns into shit. My hometown, my old school, my family, my girlfriend, old man John, everything in that turd's path turned into shit. That's pretty sick, man. Good thing it was just a dream, huh? Yes, that's a good thing. You feeling better now? Yeah. Good. Then let's get down to business. You see, Snake, people are just sacks of shit, and they're full of holes. Fill them up with water, and it's gotta come out from somewhere. Okay, maybe that was a bad example. What I'm trying to say is, no matter what the situation, there's always a way out. Don't throw in the towel yet. Clear your mind. Think it through. Assess the situation. You'll find a way to escape. Got it. Don't let my nightmare come true. Right. Okay, there was another little Easter egg that we can do in this game, in this part of the game. To get a, to see an extra little scene. And also, we have the single action army. We just don't have any ammunition for it. This guy is going to throw you a fork and some random food. Now, the idea is not to eat it. You can eat it if you want. That's fine. But you take it up and you throw it back through the hole. And boom. Huh? What? You don't want this? Okay, the guy throws you a bat. You throw it back, he picks it up off the floor and eats it. Does anyone else find that strange? Also notice, once you go in the first person view, over on the right side of Snake, you'll see a little kind of a fish eye look to it. Where the, uh... That's because of his missing eye now. You do have to eat something, so might as well eat the rat. He's going wild with that fork. No, don't worry, that guy will be back. Hmm, we're stuck in prison. <laughs> Remember in Metal Gear Solid, we were stuck in prison until Otacon came around and gave you a bottle of ketchup. They could use as fake blood, and that'll the guard will come in to check on you, and then you'll get up and you can beat the piss out of him or something. Uh, in the event that that didn't work, you screwed that up somehow, eventually the, um, the ninja would come by and let you out, but I don't think that's going to happen here. Time. Playing around with the army, this single action army. Let's do this again. We don't need no frog. Why is he throwing us frogs? Eat? Don't they have any real food? Hey, thanks. Hey, thanks. I'm gonna eat this frog off the floor. Raw, apparently. Okay, I think we only had to do that twice. So uh, I'm gonna cut the camera until we get to the secret part. Huh? I was wrong. You huh? to do it one more time. Your loss. It's your loss. We'll eat this off the floor because you didn't want it. Okay, here comes the secret scene.
Hey, you're not such a bad guy after all. I, uh, <laughs> I guess not all Americans are dogs. You mean it? Yeah. You know, before the war started, I used to live in America. I even had a, a wife and a kid. You must be pretty lonely. Yeah, I am pretty lonely. Really lonely. What's your kid's name? Johnny. Johnny. Nice ring to it. Really? You like it? Well, if you say so, I'll believe you. Actually, my name is Johnny, too. All the firstborn sons in my family are called Johnny. My dad's a Johnny, and my son's son will probably be a Johnny, too. The whole clan of Johnnies. Why do we have a Cold War anyway? Our two countries used to be such good friends. Yeah, I hear you. I just want to see my family again. Must be rough. Yeah. Not as rough as you have it, though. Here. I filched them from your equipment when the Colonel wasn't looking. It's uh, the least I can do. Well? Don't suppose you could let me out of here. Huh? I can't do that. Hey, don't you go getting any funny ideas. If you try to escape, I'll have to shoot you. I've said too much. I gotta go. <clears throat> oh, a touching moment between prisoner and prisoner. Pris prisoner and pris Fuck, I don't know. Anyway, that guy, what that was meant to imply was that guy is the grandfather of the dude that was the jailkeeper of Solid Snake in Metal Gear Solid. Kind of a reoccurring concept. But here we go. The way you get out of the jail cell is you go to 141 point, I think, what, 75? Or some crap like that. I wrote it down somewhere, but I'm watching this well after I played it. I think it's 75. When you go and you hit that, it goes and unlocks the door. Door unlocked. Shit, it didn't work, did it? Time to eat. Oh, giving me more food. Come on, let me out. There's some frequency that you can do that gets you out the door. And I had forgotten what it was, apparently, because I'm standing around like an idiot instead of escaping. Maybe I was waiting for the guard, waiting for Johnny to leave. But, uh... It's hard to tell what I was thinking at the time. Okay, that unlocked it. Now we're going to pull out the cigarette, the cigar spray, which will knock out Johnny instead of uh, killing him. Because really, what do we have to kill him with? The fork. And for some reason, they won't let you do CQC while in this form. There we go, he's down. Did you manage to escape? Yeah, I'm out. Be careful. In your present state, you're practically naked. You don't have a single decent weapon, and you'll never survive in a battle. Take some time and pull yourself together. Eva says she's recovered your equipment, 
So rendezvous with her as soon as possible to get your gear back. Use the escape route Eva set up for you. Go down into the sewers through the manhole in the northwest section of Groznygrad. Start out by exiting the holding cells and heading northwest. Okay. We've essentially escaped. We've knocked out the jailer. And, well, uh, it's far enough, I think. Thanks for watching. I'm sure to catch you next episode.